Do you want to introduce this one, Tony? Or sure. Uh, welcome back to Ratchet and Clank Going Commando, developer commentary. I'm um, Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And uh, this is level six, I think, in the order that we're doing these. But not level six in the order that we made them. No, certainly not. I think this was originally level seven or eight, I think. Yeah, and so later on, the level order was all messed up, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I don't know any game that's ever had a level order that, that you set out to make levels or put the levels in an order a certain way when you start the game. I don't know any game that's actually ended up with that same order by the time that they've shipped. I've certainly never worked on a game that did that. Um, yeah, because the macro changes and the flow changes and, you know, just some levels get cut and you have to drop them in in a uh, different order than you had originally had it built. Now, I, don't but, think, I don't think either of us worked on this level, right? No, I think uh, Peter Hastings programmed this level, uh, I believe, and I'm not sure who designed it. But uh, uh, I think Leslie, actually. I think Leslie did. Okay. Both, both now members of Inkling Games. Uh, right. The, the, the owners of Inkling Games. Um, and this was the first of our many snow levels in this game. Or I think it was the first snow level in this game. Oh, here's a, a very oh. special story. Yes, go ahead, Mike. Why don't you tell him the story? So I just want to take a, take a minute to talk about Dan. Um, so Dan was uh, an artist at Insomniac Games. And uh, the other artists used to really like hiding him in games. That's his face on the Snow Dan right there. And uh, his face is hidden all throughout the early Ratchet and Clank games. Uh, he's a really nice guy and uh, passed away uh, for a short time after he left Insomniac Games. So now we've still... It's, it's really cool. We've got these things in here as a tribute to him. And uh, Yeah, great guy. One of the nicest guys I ever met, Dan. Uh, yeah. And you get a you get a skill point for breaking him, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> do we do anything with Dan, the skill points in this game, or do you just have them? Dan would want it that way. Uh, that's how you <laughs> unlock cheats. Okay. So okay. Um, I think it's in special cheats. Yeah, after five skill points, you get the first right. one and so forth. That's impossible. Uh, is that a Star Wars reference? Uh, I think that's a reference to the impossible challenge in oh. one of the arenas. Oh, I see what you did there. I think you should use the Ninja Star. That's almost leveled up. But this is or a perfect sniper. You could not listen to me and just go ahead and use the sniper rifle. All right, now I will use the ninja, the chopper, the proper name. Fortunately, these guys don't have projectiles, so they're proper fight. Right. Well, I'm sorry for ruining the family friendliness of your <laughs> podcast. Honey. It's funny because uh, someone on Facebook, uh, I, I was saying, you know, oh, you, you know, you might not want to listen to this because it's not safe for work. And someone was like, well, yeah, only the stuff coming out of my right ear is not safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but wait, I'm coming out. Of oh, I see. Do, do we, uh, did we put armor in this game? We have armor in this game, right? Uh, I think. Uh, we, we haven't, haven't had a chance come to buy the it armor yet. vendor. At all? No, no. And you're taking a lot of damage. It seems like armor would be useful. But we haven't I come don't... across them. You're right. So I guess we don't have armor in this game. No, we I... we do have armor. You're. I remember. I remember where there is an armor vendor, and we haven't run into it yet. Huh. Okay. Let's see. I got to get up there. How do you think I get that? I don't know. All right. Well, why don't you go along game facts real quick? No, I think we should just keep moving. Maybe I should hit it with the wrench. <laughs> and you know what? We should make t-shirts that say hit it with the wrench. See? Right. See, I'm constantly doing, the, uh, constantly doing the commercial thing. So is this the level with the giant moving train? This is. Yes, the giant we, moving train. Which we referred to in our very first episode. Right. As so long probably... Ago. The worst idea in the history of <laughs> ideas. Oh man, uh, Tony! I, th I think it's still used as a running, or it was used as a running gag uh, for the rest of my tenure there. Oh, well done, well upgraded. Thank you. We haven't had a weapon upgrade in a while, so this will be a a nice a nice reward for us. That's true. Um, but yeah, it was still a running gag uh, up until the time I left. Of you know, whenever somebody would ask for something ridiculous. 
uh, you would say, well, at least I'm not asking to move across seven uh, a train going 700 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, 50 meters per second or whatever. Right. Oh, I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, on a spherical world. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we don't. That, we never. We never went to that end. We never put the train on a spherical world, and and killed somebody. So you know what? The electrolyzer is still not in uh, in my inventory anymore. Yeah, I guess it's just not. Wasn't deemed as a gadget necessary to ever really equip. Yeah, I guess because we did make it so that you could go on the pad and press triangle. Oh, come here. Can you throw that off the ledge? No. No? We Thank actually do, are polite to you in that regard? Yeah, thankfully. I want to get the platinum bolts because I, I like mods. The mods are really good. I think the mods were a very great addition to this, uh, to this game. I know I really wanted to do them. I don't think I came up with the idea, but I remember being very much behind it. I, I love that mechanic in other games. You know, I like to think that mechanic was inspired by a ton of games. Was it? Well, was inspired by? <laughs> For the first time ever. Uh, you know, not like anything Anything in these games is, is derivative of other games. Of course no, not. No, of course was, not. Just like we were saying, you know, we did guns first before guns were invented. That's right. I'm going to kill That's... that thing. I like the way that those enemies are transported in. That was good. Oh, from the little... Oh, kill? these are... I think these are... No. So there's two versions of those uh, spider bot guys. There's more than two, there's, I think, yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of art, because in the arenas, they're actually... if You never see them up close in the arena, but there's actually a much lower, lower poly version of them that we use in the arena because there are so many of them on screen. And we were able to get away with it because the camera is so far pulled out in that, uh, in that section that you, you don't know yeah you, you never really notice i suppose if you went into first person you could probably see possibly but how often do you go to first person in the arena yeah i think that's what we were counting on i'll uh next time we go to the arena i'll go in first person and we can see and now you're about to jump on the train oh i think no i think is it the train or a boss fight first it's a train and then a boss fight yeah so uh while i'm playing this because i want to give this my full attention why don't you talk about some of the hundreds of things that are just really hard to do while you're about on About why this is a bad idea. Yeah, just and, and across the board. start with the fact that, you know, the different ways you could approach this, scrolling the level or all that stuff. Right. Uh, I think you take the teleport pad. I think you're... Oh, no, okay, you're right. This is absolutely the right way. So this section, for whatever reason, I don't know why we decided to do it this way, is actually a train moving across the world. Um... And you might think, oh, well, yeah, of course it would be. Why would that be a problem? Well, the problem is that everything has to sort of inherit that momentum in order to feel right. So if this train is moving at 70 meters per second, all the weapons, all the projectiles from the weapons must then move at an additional se 70 meters per second yeah, as it not, flies along the... Uh, yeah, it has to get added onto it. Right. And when you're dealing with a bunch of particles and stuff, a lot of particles do not... A lot of particle effects do not look right when they're moving that fast. They just don't. And a lot of things will drag behind or look strange. And uh, to have to retrofit every single effect to look good including, when it's moving at that speed. Including everything that's done on every weapon right. that you shoot. Is a huge task that we just didn't foresee when we did this. Because we figured, oh, well, yeah, of course you can add on. Uh, it's easy to just add on a velocity to whatever you're doing, but to make it look right at that time is very difficult. We thought, and, hey, if we scroll the environment, that'll be super hard. Why don't right. we take it easy on ourselves? Well, because there's a lot of twists and turns in this section. I mean, it's it, it, it would be difficult to scroll the environment when it's when it's turning and moving like it is here, but um, I don't. I'm not convinced that it would have been harder than what this ended up being. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could see, even on these explosions, how those particles sort of fall back a little bit when you hit them, where the uh, the main part of that explosion stays centered, but the other particles sort of fall away. It You don't notice it, really, 
Uh, oh, dude. At least I hope people didn't notice it. Look at that. Oh, what is that? That is a blade ball caught in the wall. Oh, that's not my blade ball. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see like, like on, on the uh, on the gravity gun, there the uh, the ring that comes off of it isn't. You're not really noticing the ring on here. It's these are all things that you might not really notice, and we would count on. Hopefully, people don't notice. If you look but, at the, if you look at the debris that comes off the gun. It shoots past your face really quickly. Right. Like you can go replay that a couple times on YouTube and see it, but that's because it is not inheriting the momentum. Right. And um, so you have to. And some of these things would just slip through the cracks or be deemed unnecessary. But things look different, and sometimes they would look wrong, and sometimes they would not look so bad. And it's you know it was just um, a huge undertaking. That was quick. Yeah, I uh, I rule and also wasn't talking, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was just sort of, I don't think a lot of players noticed those things that were wrong when they were playing the game. Uh, and hopefully they don't notice too much now that we're pointing out the fact that so many things are wrong in that section. <laughs> but, it's a short section. Yeah, but, I mean, it's just one of those things where you don't realize when you're coming up with the idea what you're really getting yourself into. And uh, And it's a thing that happens a lot in making video games is you you accident you bite off more than you can chew just because uh it's not it's not thinking it through it's it's you just there are so many things that can happen right that something that seems like it's going to save you a lot of time often costs way more time than it was worth right and um yeah and that's just sort of where we ended up with the train is that we thought we would get a huge savings by actually moving a train and um, I, I don't think we realized exactly what we were getting into. Or at least uh, maybe there was somebody who was telling us that we were all stupid for, for trying it. And if, and if you're that person, please post in the comments or send me an email or something. Yeah. I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> so, uh, so what do we have now? Oh, we have the boss, the boss Angela, fight. Yeah. Another fucking boss fight. No, the thief. Boss fight with the thief. Because she wants to kill the cute little proto pet. You've lost, Megacorp. Take your imperialistic eco-fascism to another dimension. Say goodbye to your Franken-fest. Come on, Frank. Too slow, you corporate lackey. He's angry. He's All ready. Right, let's do this. I paused the game. I was like, oh, I need to switch weapons and hit the wrong button. <laughs> Fuck. The Seeker Cannon is so good. It's powerful. I'll give it that. Well, and but... it, it, you don't have to aim it at all. Like, just get it in the general direction. Oh, crap. Oh. Do you have no health? Do we, do we not have any health crates down here? I only have one health point. When, when in a situation where I have no health. That's right. Just drop those mini oh. turrets. Oh. Oh, yeah. but you killed her. Did, oh, at the last second, really? At the last that second. Some bullshit. Just to fill your right ear with more vulgarity. <laughs> it's a funny twist, uh, Tony, that you're the guy who's... Uh, uh, because when we first started UselessOpinions.com, I wanted the articles to all be very family-friendly. <laughs> and, uh, and you insisted that we, uh, that we, we, you know, we use the, the vulgarity and stuff. So I don't want to give away anything about the plot of this game. Right. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that there's an evil maniac who has a crazy gadget, and he's trying to take over the universe. <laughs> that was, that was kind of a popular Ratchet and Clank plot. 